Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Varsity Football. I'm your host, Brian Morrow, and I'll be with you for the next nine weeks with lots of great football action. Comcast Varsity Football will be bringing you the best in high school football every afternoon from 2.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. You'll see teams from all over your area, whether you're from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or Delaware, Comcast Varsity Football will be there. Today we're going out to North Jersey to see a matchup between the Becton Wildcats and the Secaucus Patriots out in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The Patriots finished 6-4 and four last year and made the state quarterfinals, but lost to Saddlebrook 21-7. Charlie Voorhees is back for his third year as the Patriots head coach and comes in with a 17-6 career record. He feels confident again this year as experience seems to lead the team. Though the team has a lot of underclassmen, they all have had varsity experience. The offensive line seems to be their key this year, as they're all huge. Alex Smith, for example, is a junior left guard and is 6'3", 255 pounds. And the right tackle, Mark Calvinico, is 6'3", 330 pounds. With their size, their line is hoping to open up holes for their running game and give their quarterback all day to throw. So far this year, they're 3-0 after beating Woodridge last weekend, 27-21. Becton head coach Jim Bonono enters his seventh year, posting a 33-29 record after finishing last season 5-5. Five five. Three of their five losses came within the final two minutes of the games, so they were on the brink of success last year. This year, depth is the Wildcats' strong point, as they feel it will make all the difference. Senior Jared Farr is back at quarterback this year after taking over in the third game last year. He'll be looking to get the ball to junior wide receiver Joe Goss, who's the, who was second team all-league last year. The Wildcats ran the ball about 80% of their plays last year, but this year they'll be looking to put the ball in the air a lot more. So far this year, they've found success as they're currently 3-0 after shutting out North Arlington last week 39-0. So which team will get the W today? Let's go out to the kickoff to find out. It's a gorgeous day for high school football here in Hudson County as Seacaucus kicks it away to Becton through the end zone. And that is where the Becton Wildcats will start from on their first possession of this football game. I'm Paul Spahalo. With me, Mike Kersey. Mike, there's a look at Jared Ferry, the quarterback for Becton. He is putting up some outstanding numbers so far this season. Indeed, he has. 5'11", 175-pound senior out for the first call of the game. And this is a very talented offense. He has two guys behind him, and Nick Cantone and Jimmy Ross, who have combined for over 500 yards in the first three games. Ferry has completed 77% of his passes in the first three games. Spread out offense for Beckton. We'll tell you about that in a moment. This is Perez in motion. Cantone. Trying to head outside. Maybe made a yard on the play. Let's meet the starting offensive unit for the Beckton Regional Wildcats. We've got Beggs and Perez on the left side of the line. Kevin Moran is the center. On the right side is Milkion and Farina. The backs and receivers for the Wildcats, Barthel, Mike mentioned him, a talented tight end. Joe Gass and Socrates Perez alternate time at split end. Jimmy Ross, a sophomore in the backfield, along with Nick Cantone, a senior three-sport athlete. That's the way Becton lines up. Let's call it second and eight for the Wildcats, a gain of two for Cantone on the first play of the game. Cantone now in the slot, and we've got a penalty, a delay of game call against the Wildcats. So it'll make it a second and 13. Well, that's one of the few ways you can stop the Beckton offense. At least uh, Seacaucus hasn't tried yet. It's early in the game, but the other three teams haven't been able to. 97 points to zero for the opponents. So uh, right now you have a team that hasn't given up a touchdown uh, on Beckton's side, hasn't given up a point, and they've scored almost 100 in three games. But the five-yard penalty doesn't help. Second and 13, Perez split out to the left side. Beckton again shows the split backfield of Ross and Cantone. Quick toss on the lateral to Ross. And he'll make it just barely to the 15-yard line. He will lose two on the play. Seacaucus will show us a three-man front. Riles on the left end. The nose tackle is Smith. The right end is Zitzman. The four linebackers line up this way. It's Georges, Zacone, Mosca, and Ford. And then three deep for, excuse me, four deep for the Patriots. Left corner is Kemper, right corner is Kakushi. Strong safety, Tapia, and Rennie is the free safety. But Georges and Mosca, the linebackers, were the ones who snuffed out that last play. Blitz is coming, 
and Cantone is caught in the backfield. Excellent tackle by Ryan Mosca, the strong side inside linebacker, got an ankle and brought him down. Ryan Mosca, one of the captains of this Patriot team. So on fourth down, Becton will punt it away. We anticipate seeing Roscoe doing the punting for Becton. Mosca, not a real big player. 5'7", 170, a senior with a lot of talent, tough, smart, makes the big plays. He's got two tackles already. It is Phil Roscoe, number 35, back to punt. Genorio back to receive the punt. The Seacock is... Genorio back to receive. Now, did he touch the football? A little dangerous play on the return team for Seacaucus, but it looks as if Seacaucus will have possession at the Becton 35-yard line. A great field position to start first drive as we take a look at number 11, Justin Genorio, 5'9", 170 pounds, an exciting football player. As Coach said, he's very smart and he's fun to watch. A great athlete, and they're going to find a way to stop him. Well, they have to do it right now because starting on the 36-yard line, Seacongas has a great shot to score. Genario looking to throw. Tosses to the left side, looking for Ford off his fingertips. It'll bring up a second and 10. Not often that Ford drops the ball, that's for sure. Starting lineup, Seacaucus offense looks like this. You have Austin Hinton, Alex Smith, David Gallion, Bo Fitzgibbons, and Ted Georges. Those guys have been together a year already. Tapia, Krieger, Kemper, Ford, and Ramirez running backs down to the tight end. Quick toss to the outside, completed. That one goes to Chris Snyder. Well, right away, two plays, they're going right to the air, Paul. As we take a look at the starting lineup on the Beckton defensive side, Pete Milkione is a defensive player. We'll get right back to that. They're back in the line already. They're going in the no huddle offense. So right away, Charlie Voorhees throwing a little wrinkle at Beckton. Genorio forced from the pocket. He's wrapped up from behind. That was Milkione and Farina combining for the tackle. Well, Genorio was looking forward, and Milkione took him from behind. That 6'2", 220-pound senior just wraps him up. And they're back at the line of scrimmage again. 8.44 left in the first quarter. Scoreless football game. Seacock is on the move. Genorio looking right. Puts the ball down. He'll run with it now. Trying to get to the outside. But uh, right away his outside was closed down. See, and that's what makes Genorio dangerous. Even though Becton was able to read the play very well, he, if he gets away, he can get the first down, he can break it for a touchdown. Here's the rest of that Becton defense. Andruff, Cantone, and Moran are the linebackers. And then the secondary, Panagaro, Ferry, Roscoe, and Barthel. Third and 12. Again, Genorio rolling to his left, throwing. Completes it, still on his feet, moving at the 10. That is Kelvin Kemper. Kemper with not only a fine catch, but an outstanding run after the initial contact. Kelvin Kemper. What a super second effort by the flanker on this team. Just a sophomore. He is quick, and he's been impressing the coaching staff every week, just getting better and better. Let's watch it again. Denorio rolling to his left, and again, beautiful spiral. Look right there. Nice pattern. Gets hit. You think he'd go down, but he stays on his feet. Great balance. Kemper. Smart, good ability. First and goal from the five. Tapia, Tapia might have lost a yard on the play. Second and goal. So the impressive passing of that man, number 11, Justin Genorio, has moved the Patriots downfield thanks to a great second effort run by a sophomore, Kelvin Kemper, after the reception. 7-10 to go in the opening quarter. Genorio looks like he wants to go back to the air, throws it, completes it to Ramirez, who got to the four, a pickup of two, third in goal. Nick Cantone right on that one as he picks up another tackle. He's the team leader in tackles coming into the game with 29. Third in goal from the four for the Patriots. You can see Genorio looking at his wrist. He's got series of plays taped to his wrist and they'll just call out a, a number or color combination. He'll look down that list and that's what he makes the call from. 6.30 to go in the opening quarter. 
And Genorio wants to keep it himself, cannot get outside. Excellent pressure coming from Danny Zito. Danny Zito read that one all the way, and they weren't going to let Genorio go anywhere here. You know what's so big about this initial drive by Seacaucus is that even when we were talking to Charlie Voorhees on the field before the game, he admitted, listen, both teams are 3-0, and but Becton was selected to win their division. They've outscored their opponents 97-0 in, in this one, so they came in as the underdogs, and they know that. To get a score here would be oh so important. Becton would feel the pressure. Fourth and goal from the 10. The Patriots send four receivers left. Everybody in the neighborhood is off to the left. Quick toss to Ford. Ford at the five. Hit at the three. And Ford is not going to make it. Jamal Ford took a step off the line. The other three receivers went out as blockers. Ford got inside the five, but finally taken off his feet at about the three. And that is where Becton will start from. Well, initially, you look at the play and you see four guys out left. You're thinking they're going to send maybe two to the corner, one guy coming across. And what happens was they just stopped right there. They had three blockers. One guy steps back and gets inside. Jamal Ford trying to push his way in, but it didn't go. Ball marked at the two, first and 10 for the Wildcats. Backs to the wall. Ross fights outside, makes his way to the 10. A very big pickup for the sophomore, Jimmy Ross. And Mike, he put up some outstanding numbers as a freshman. Yeah, over 1,000 yards as a freshman on the varsity in 2000. He made second team all league running back that year and just uh, an incredible uh, feat because they don't uh, end up take too many freshmen on those uh, all league teams well jimmy's father carl is actually the offensive coordinator for these wildcats 5 10 to go in the opening quarter canton in motion once again it's ross Ross showing a burst of speed to the outside. Ford gets him by the hips, but it is a first down for Becton. Excellent pursuit by Ford on that play, but a good speed by Jimmy Ross coming into the game. 29 carries, 310 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. And uh, he's tough. Uh, I mean, the combination of uh, Cantone and Ross, if they get the ground game going, it will be very tough for the Patriots to stop him. Jim Bonanno said before the game, we have six talented skill players, as they're often called, We and there's only one football. He said, so we want to make everybody happy. We will spread the ball around a lot. Gas in motion. Pitch right for Voss. And Ross knocked off his feet as he crosses the 20 near the 25. There are a number of players in there. Rich Riles, number 78, had a wrap on him. 6'2", 280-pounder, has become a dominant force as the left defensive end. Ross in week number two of the season against Harrison, 173 rushing yards and a pair of touchdowns against the Blue Tide. We are under four minutes to go in the opening quarter. Quick toss, Ford almost intercepted it. It was intended for Cantone. Jamal Ford was looking at grass and nothing but grass if he had intercepted that one. He saw six. That was the big number in the front of his eyes, but he just couldn't get there. Watch him read it right here. Lower part of your screen. Oh, he wanted a chance, but the, the ball was overthrown anyway. And uh, a good thing for Becton in that case. Third and short. We'll call it four for the Wildcats. Again, the Patriots show blitz. It's Cantone. And Cantone looks like he will have enough for a first down. Once again, Jim Bonanno said we, we want to we want to spread the ball around. Barthel is an excellent receiver. Gas is an excellent receiver. Perez a receiver. Cantone both as a runner and receiver. Ross and even Ferry said we've got to get everybody a few touches on the ball. 3.40 to go in the opening quarter. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Ross threw a hole, finally knocked off his feet. Tapio with the tackle, helped out by Zacone. 
Offensively for Beckton, I think one of the big keys is to mix it up offensively. They're doing that right now. In fact, they started this drive inside their own five-yard line. They're moving it. But they haven't gotten the ball yet to tight end E.J. Barthel. If they get him involved early, maybe open things up a little bit along the inside, get the Seacaucus defense thinking. Barthel is a big target. He's strong, and uh, he had four receptions uh, earlier in the year for over 100 yards in one game. Second down. Second and seven. Ross got the ball on that play. Jimmy Ross, the workhorse right now. Third and three coming up for the Wildcats. Becked in five and five last year. Three tough losses coming in the final two minutes or less. So they certainly could have been on paper an eight and two team. Scoreless football game, 2.43 to go. Blitz is on and uh, Seacaucus went way over the line on that one. But they've been showing blitz throughout the first quarter. They're playing an aggressive style of football right now, and they just got a little bit anxious on that defensive play. And there's a look at head coach Charlie Voorhees, 18-6 and six in his third year. And congratulations to the Voorhees family as they added a new addition a week ago Friday, a That's baby right. boy. Charlie and uh, wife Teresa with their son Eric joining big brother CJ. And just to show how old I am, I saw Charlie Voorhees <laughs> play football on this field. Matter of fact, uh, Charlie and his dad, Charlie, a longtime member of the Caucus Fire Department, we were talking about uh, the old days of coming up here to see Caucus, uh, a beautiful community. A beautiful school here. Very tight-knit community yeah, as no, well. No doubt about it. They are. Uh, it's, it's just a fun place to visit any time of the year. First and ten for the Wildcats. Two minutes left in the opening quarter. Matter of fact, uh, their girls volleyball team, and particularly their girls volleyball coach, a milestone as Maria Nolan about a week ago reached her 500th coaching victory. That's quite a feat in any sport. That's terrific. Ryan Mosca on the tackle there. That's his third tackle of the game. He wrapped him up by the legs. Nice job. Ferry looking to throw. Pocket broke down a little, completes it to Gas. That's Gas first time he's touching the football. He's got it for a first down in Secaucus territory at the 42. Huge first down for Beckton in this spot as they are getting the offense moving. That offense that's averaging over 30 points a game, starting this one on their own two-yard line. Watch the replay again, and you'll see the quarterback, Jared Ferry, move out. Gas in the game on the right side. Just turns a little out pattern. Not too far away, gets just what he needs, and the first down. Seacaucus 42-yard line. Ross, flag on the play. No game. There's Krieger with the tackle for the Patriots with 59 seconds to go in the opening quarter. So and for the second time, penalty be, will be against Becton. Yeah, they'll mark it off in this spot. Seacaucus defensively needs to try to slow down Cantone and Jimmy Ross. No gain on the play. They might, it's procedure penalty. And they decline the it. Okay. First and 15 or second and 10, so the Patriots will take the down. Ron Vaca is our referee for today's game. Under a minute to go. Quick pitch to Ross. Ross still on his feet at the 30, the 25, and he's finally forced out of bounds. And it will be another first down for the Wildcats on the completed pass from Ferry to Ross. I like that play, and I like the way they're mixing it up on offense. The Wildcats, especially Jimmy Ross, the workhorse here. I mean, we, we talked about it before. He's just a youngster. He's a sophomore, and he's so quick. We're going to see a lot of him carrying the ball today, as he already has in the first two drives. 41 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ferry rolling right. Pitches it out and hits the ground. Ross covers it. We'll take a very short break right now with 37 seconds to go in a scoreless first quarter. 
I'm Lou Tilly on the Sports Connection tonight at 11. Seattle, 116 regular season wins. Now they're in trouble. And from the baseball wars, Andy Musser wrapping up a great career with the Phillies. He's here to talk baseball with us on the Sports Connection. Have you ever felt like you're between a rock and a hard place? I know I have. If you currently receive insurance settlement payments, prize winnings, or any annuity, Prosperity Partners can help lighten your load with money to pay bills or buy a car, maybe a new home. You could start a business or get an education, whatever you want. So if you receive an annuity and need cash now, call Prosperity Partners at 1-800-435-1213. We make life easy. CN8 News, weeknights at 7 and 10 Eastern. Live, in-depth news coverage, plus the technology, the tools, and the experience to bring you unsurpassed weather forecasting. CN8 News, the only place you'll find Philadelphia Business Journal reports and live interactive web polls. CN8 News, exclusive entertainment reports from e-television and exclusive sneak peeks at the next issue of Philadelphia Magazine. CN8 News, the best Philadelphia sports coverage anywhere. CN8 News, live, weeknights, 7 and 10 Eastern, powered by Comcast. CN8 Sports presents College Football Game Day. Your 50-yard line ticket to great college football. Each Saturday, catch our featured game of the week. Back with your favorite teams. College Football Game Day. Welcome back, everybody. On the Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield scoreboard, it's Beck did nothing. Seacock is nothing. Time has run out in the first quarter. We'll take a short business break right now. We'll be back with more football right after this. Comcast In Concert presents three hours of the hottest new pop music. First, tomorrow stars get their big break today when Comcast goes behind the scenes at the Pantene Pro Voice Music Competition. Then it's wild music, candid questions, and revealing answers with teen sensation Mandy Moore, followed by LFO. In two shout-back performances from Much Music USA. Only for you on CN8. CN8 Extra. Real stories that go beyond the headlines. Stories that expose, examine, and explore. CN8 Extra. Weeknights, 7 and 10 Eastern on CN8 News. I'm Lou Tilly on the Sports Connection tonight at 11. Seattle, 116 regular season wins. Now they're in trouble. And from the baseball wars, Andy Musser wrapping up a great career with the Phillies. He's here to talk baseball with us on the Sports Connection. Welcome back to Comcast Varsity Football. I'm Brian Morrow. Today we're out at Secaucus High School in Hudson County to see Secaucus battle the Becton Wildcats. Let's rejoin our local Comcast crew for second quarter action. We are ready for second quarter football action. Here at Secaucus High School, a scoreless first quarter, but the Becton Wildcats are on the move. The ball marked at the 18-yard line. And the Vecton Wildcats are going to take a timeout. Well, we have the battle of the unbeatens. And uh, right now, after a scoreless first quarter, we can see why. These are two tough teams. They're hitting hard. And uh, you can see they're enjoying playing football. This series goes back, Paul, to 1977. And if you will, this is the rubber game. They have won 12 apiece over that time. So you can't get any more even than that. Mike, uh, with Seacog is coming out in the no huddle, we didn't get a chance to do a little prep on the game. Tell us uh, some of the keys for the football game that probably we've seen through the first quarter. Well, uh, yeah, actually, you know, with Becton, uh, they need to mix it up offensively. They're doing that right now. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't gone to E.J. Barthel a little bit more, but they did uh, throw to Joe Gass, and uh, that got him a first down uh, back in the first quarter and keeps this drive alive. Defensively, they need to contain uh, quarterback Justin Gennario. He's an exciting football player, and uh, and they did that for the most part. I mean, they got good field position, Seacaucus did, the one time they had the ball, but they weren't able to put it in deep in Beckton territory. Quick number from the first uh, quarter of play. Beckton with 78 total yards. Nicely uh, mixed up, 38 on the ground, 34 in the air. Ross with 32 rushing yards already. Beckton with the football. That is Ross once again trying to get to the outside. Forced wide on the field, and that was Tapia who finally forced him down. It was a nice play there by Ryan Mosca. I mean, you saw Jimmy Ross go to the left side, and Mosca came in. You'll see it right here. Watch the handoff. Mosca 
He steps right aside. Mosca was coming in. You didn't see him on the right-hand side of your screen, but he was forcing that play, and Ross gets to the outside. Good pursuit there by Tapia as he knocks him out of bounds. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Ball marked at the 12. Pitch back to Ross. Cuts inside. Huge hole there at the 5, the 2. Finally knocked off his feet. Dragged down by Tapia and Kikuchi. Well, Jimmy Ross working hard in the first quarter and here early in the second quarter as he keeps it going on this drive. In case you just joined us, this started deep in Beckton territory. They got the ball back uh, on downs on the two-yard line, and uh, they're close to finishing a 98-yard drive. Cantone breaks through it, arm tackle, touchdown. Nick Cantone, a two-yard touchdown run. Just barely a minute over the first, second quarter gives Becton the lead. His sixth rushing touchdown of the year, Nick Cantone. He is the guy they go to when they are uh, looking for a touchdown. He has six, Jimmy Ross has two, and uh, Cantone, a big, strong kid, ranked at the top of his class, 1300s on his SATs, uh, so he can do it on the field and in the classroom. Beggs will attempt the extra point for Becton. Ferry the holder. And the kick is good. The kick is up and good. Just sneaks inside the left upright. With the score, Becton seven, and Seacock is nothing. On the Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield scoreboard, we'll be right back. It's official. Ford is offering 0% financing on everything. Ford drives America. And right now, we're leading the way with America's best sellers at America's best values. 0% on everything, including Ford Escape, Ford Explorer, Ford Expedition, and the number one selling truck of the world, Ford F-Series. 0% means you pay no interest, and that will save you thousands. Act now. Ford drives America. Visit your Tri-State Quality Ford store. Making it easy to say, count me in. Making more doctors available. Making more time for the cupcakes. Making customer service better. Making time to be a horsey. And making it all simple. Making me one with my workload. That's how we make healthcare work for you. Making it not so scary, after all. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Making healthcare work. The Wildcats take a 7-0 lead on a 98-yard march, but the Patriots want to get the ball back. Fielded by Tapia at the 20. And he'll bring it out to the 34-yard line. So he'll give the Patriots some good starting field position. Let's take another look. This is replay is brought to you by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, making health care work. The touchdown run from two yards out by Nick Cantone. And let's give big credit to the offensive line who kept pushing, pushing, pushing against a, a big defensive line that Seacaucus has. Uh, Mike Beggs, Pete Milkione, Kevin Moran, Steve Andruff, uh, Onilio Perez, Dan Farina all getting into the action and getting the job done. A six minute, 47 second drive for the Beckton Wildcats that covered 98 yards. Tapia of the call. Patriot helmet pops free. Yeah, you know they're hitting hard <laughs> out there when you see one of those helmets rolling around. Tapia, man who lost his helmet. Charlie Voorhees says very fast, very strong. 5'9", 180 pounder, made that side step to the right there wow. and then just got, yeah, just got hit uh, in the front of the helmet, popped right off. Out of the shotgun. Genorio looking long right just over the fingertips intended for Snyder. Well, Snyder made that run down the right sideline, and he had his man, too. The ball a little overthrown, but it looked like Snyder may have slowed up a little bit at the end of that play. That would have been a big one for Seacaucus, as you could see. Snyder coming back, shaking his head. 
saying, mm, another another yard within my grasp would have had a big play. Yeah, he ran out of real estate to his right. He was on that sideline. He just really had nowhere else to go, so he had to make that dive. Genorio rolling right, looking left. Good coverage there. He throws it for Tapia, and I'm going to give Genorio credit here. He threw it away. That was the smart thing to do. Had it, be, had it been completed, it would have been for a loss. It probably would have been intercepted. So Genorio said, hey, I'm chucking it into the stands. Well, that's what uh, the coaching staff likes about Genorio, just his poise under pressure. You know, he came out to the left side, and uh, you're right. If he threw that ball on a line drive, there was a good chance it could have been picked off. Uh, instead, he overthrows it, throws it out of bounds. Good play. Uh, better than giving up uh, six points here or giving up the interception. He'll just punt it away. Jim Korazinski is in the punt for the Patriots on fourth and seven. And it looks like gas back to receive. And the Patriots are short of man, so they're going to have to call a timeout. Those are the types of penalties that drive coaches up a wall. So with the timeout on the field here at Secaucus High School, we'll take a short break with Becton leading by seven. <laughs> You know, right before you start to laugh, when you're not laughing yet, there's that split second when a switch inside you flips, and you laugh. What flips that switch? And when you understand something for the first time so completely and thoroughly, when you really didn't have a clue just a second before, how's that happen? These are the moments we live for and bring to your life every day with high-speed internet and digital cable. There's all sorts of new stuff coming to your television. And the stuff you want on your computer can get there as fast as you want it. And any time you want to lay back with someone special and just watch a movie, you can. Because everything we do is about connecting you to the stuff you love most. It's your life. We connect it. Comcast. So Beckton will take over after the punt with 9.52 to go in the first half. And the Wildcats own a 7-0 lead thanks to a 98-yard march down the field. Nick Cantone capped it off with a two-yard touchdown run. There's head coach Jim Bonanno, his seventh year as Becton Wildcat coach, 34-29 record and 3-0 here in 2001. Starting from their own 44-yard line, this high-powered Becton offense, the give is to Cantone, who has the touchdown, spins off two tacklers. He's into Patriot territory. He'll take it down to the 36-yard line. Nice run by Nick Cantone. And you can see the power by this fullback slash halfback, depending on how they use him. But, boy, I tell you, when he's running like that, he's got the, the size of a fullback, 6-foot, 210-pounder, just pounds his way. Standout wrestler and track star in his own right, too. So uh, he certainly loves his sports and uh, is a big-time football player. Matter of fact, he made it to the meet of champions as a javelin thrower last year. First and 10, again Cantone. And Cantone is down to the 25 yard line, which means he should have another first down. And he does, an 11 yard pickup for Cantone. Well, Cantone, uh, besides uh, being uh, solid on both sides of the ball, is uh, starting to look at some schools. He visited Colgate and he will make a trip to Wagner. And uh, at either one of those schools, uh, looks like he'd be a good fit as we watch him here. He saw nothing along the inside. He said, okay, but that was a quick step to the outside. Wasn't it for a big guy? Sure was. First and 10 on a pair of runs by Cantone. He'll get the third call, breaks a big hole up the middle, and he will go untouched into the end zone. A 26-yard touchdown run for Nick Cantone. And that'll make it 13 to nothing. Second touchdown of the game and back-to-back -back drives, and he makes it look easy in this spot. Again, great offensive uh, line work by uh, Moran and, and Perez on the left side, along with Mike Beggs, number 58. And there you see a, a look with Canton uh, Sons helmets uh, in this spot. So now we know what it looks like. Now there's Beggs, who threw that good block. He is out to try the second placement of the afternoon. Kick sailing to the right, but it does make it inside the upright. And it is a 14-0 lead for Becton with 8.51 left in the first half. 
There is Jim Bonanno congratulating his team. Here's another look at the 25-yard run by Cantone. And there is the big blocking I was talking about. Big hole there, left side of the line. Perez and, and Beggs getting it done. Left tackle, left guard, and he walks right in for his seventh touchdown of the season. That touchdown replay brought to you again by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, making health care work. 14-0 in favor of the Wildcats. Well, Becton really wants this game, too, as, as, uh, besides the fact that they want to go 4-0. Uh, last year, uh, they uh, they actually lost the, the game to Sea Caucus by a count of 12-7. to So they like to turn it around in this spot and, and put one in their column. Kick over Genorio's head. He'll field it at the 5. Perez trying to keep him on the inside. Nice move by Genorio, but he's just dragged down inside the 10-yard line. Good tackle by Danny Zito. Becton with 112 rushing yards in the first half of play. Nick Cantone, five carries for 63 yards, and of course he's got a pair of touchdowns for the Wildcats. We just saw Danny Zito, a defensive end for Becton, and uh, he is uh, primarily a defender, but when he comes out there on special teams, it looked like Tenorio actually got around him, and he just threw that arm out and put the paw on him and brought him down. So this is going to have to be a big drive for the Patriots. They were oh so close in the first quarter from taking the early lead. Stopped on downs at the two, and right away Becton marched the whole length of the field, and then Becton scored quickly. So this is a big series for the Patriots, and it does not get started all that well. Good contain on the outside. Indeed, uh, good tackle there defensively. You know, you go back to 1994 is the last time the Becton Wildcats won the league championship. They have their eyes on that this year, and they won the uh, state title in North Jersey and the league in uh, North Jersey Group 1 in 1993. Genorio steps up, throws on the run, incomplete. Again, good coverage by the Becton secondary in this spot. Bill Panagaro, Jared Ferry, Phil Roscoe, E.J. Barthel. They are uh, doing a great job covering. He, he does have a little bit of time to throw, but no one to throw to. Eight minutes, four seconds to go in the first half on what has turned out to be a beautiful day for high school football. It was rainy and extremely windy all throughout North Jersey in the morning. I but did not uh, expect this. No, this turned out to be a gorgeous day. Genorio near the goal line, airs it out, incomplete. Looking for Ford. Ford drew tight coverage by Ferry. That ball kind of floated up there. If he had a little bit more zip on it, might have been able to reach his receiver. Strong wind blowing from our left to our right, which means it was right in the face of Genorio. And it will be a difficult punt coming up for Jim Korzynski. Bernardo has to be happy with the way things are going thus far for his Wildcats. About five yards deep in the end zone is Korzynski. Floats out a nice kick, but right away the wind just slaps it back. Takes a bit of a Seacaucus bounce, but it will stop at the 27-yard line. And Becton has an outstanding starting position to possibly put their third score up on the board. Well, we know that the Patriots were going to do their best to stay in this game early. And uh, and coming in as the underdogs, they, they felt they needed to do that. But uh, things have been working against them. They stopped them on that first drive. Uh, but uh, since then, uh, Becton has been unstoppable on offense, especially with the run. Seacock has looked like they jumped. Hard count by Ferry. They'll move it five yards, make it a little bit easier for the Becton offense. You got a pretty young team on the uh, Seacaucus uh, defensive side, too. You have Alex Smith and Bo Fitzgibbons, uh, both juniors. Matt Zacone is a linebacker. And the secondary, all young. First and five after the markoff. Cantone stopped right near the line. 
possibly got a yard on the play. And who's involved again but one Ryan Mosca. Seems to be involved in just about every play. And there's a look at number 26. One of the captains on this team. Loves to make the plays. You can, Even through the helmet, you can see the intensity in his face when he's looking over for the defensive sides. Second and five for the Wildcats. Quick toss to Ross. Ross has an opening up the middle, and Ross is going to go for the score. A 21-yard pass from Ferry to Ross. Well, it worked before. Why not try it again? And it works this time going to the left side of the line. And again, plenty of room for Jimmy Ross to step through that hole and uh, hit pay dirt. His third touchdown of the season. Again, Mike begs on to attempt the point. 7.07 to go in the half. The placement is there. The kick on the way. And this one tails well off to the right. So the kick is no good. And Beckton will sustain the lead at 20 to nothing with 7.07 to go in the first half. Let's watch it again. If that shovel pass works, it's great. If it doesn't, it's dangerous. It's worked twice for them. They're two for two on it with two big gains, including this touchdown. And how excited is the sophomore Jimmy Ross to get in the end zone on this play? So you know what? Nick Cantone got two of them. I think I should get one, too. And once again, that replay brought to you by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, making health care work 20 to nothing in favor of Beckton. Now, the Patriots are a good team. The biggest thing that they have got to do is to stay focused. I mean, there's a lot of time left in this game. They need to put something on the board, but they can't get down on themselves here. Could use a big return here. Genorio fields it at the 16-yard line, setting up wall left, makes a move at the 30. He's across the 40, at the 50, finally dragged down, and maybe that was the spark they needed. Phil Roscoe with the tackle. Unfortunately for the Patriots, there is a flag on the play. And I only say Patriots because generally on a return of any kind, punt or kickoff, it almost always is against the return team. We'll wait for the official call. And right away from the reaction of Jamal Ford, I can tell it's going to go against the Patriots. They'll still start in good field position, but they are not in Beckton territory. Well, they got called for a clip on that play, and Charlie Voorhees... Looking things over, saying, all right, we still have good field position. Let's go. Let's let's get into it. One thing Voorhees will not do, he will never let his team give up. I mean, they will fight. Now, the, it's the mark from the point of the infraction, which was the Seacock is 46. So it's going to be marked back to the 31. And here it is again. Just a, a nifty move by Gennario. He found that seam, cuts to the left. Back inside, keeps going, and finally gets tackled. Didn't see exactly where the clip was, but uh, obviously one of the officials found it. Very important for the Patriots, once again, to get a good drive going here. Tapia. That whole line was stuffed up the middle. Beckton defensive line is starting to concentrate right now on Blocking up the middle. Boy, they stuffed out that misdirection play, didn't they? There's a look at the Beckton defense, who has played so well thus far this afternoon. Second and 11. The passing game that worked so well in the first quarter with the win, struggling now. Quick toss to the outside. There's a completion. It goes to Kemper. Again, that passing game with the win worked so well for the Patriots, but come the second quarter, it's been a little difficult to throw. There, a nice completion from Genorio to Kemper. Well, nice strong arm, and he put a little bit more oomph into it, knowing he had to go to the sideline on that play. Good pass, good catch, and let's uh, take a look at it again. See how hard he had to throw that ball just to get it to that spot. Genorio, a uh, receiver last year for the Patriots, so he's getting some on-the-job experience as a junior quarterback. Charlie Voorhees loves him. Third and three. Big down for the Patriots. Tapia still going, and he's got first down yardage. John Tapia. 
as Secaucus on the move. 5.36 to go in the first half. Good push on the right side from Ted Bigiorgio. 6'3", 225-pound tackle. And Bo Fitzgibbons, a 5'10", 220-pounder. He's just a junior. Works hard, has lots of quickness. And uh, there you see the scoreboard. Uh, this is something I've not seen before. The offense split. The quarterback wasn't even in the huddle. Genorio looking left. Ducks inside. He's got some room to the outside, but he can't get there. Just couldn't get going to the outside. I believe it was Milky Own who finally got him from behind. Well, looks like Seacock is trying a bit of trickery in this spot, and uh, it didn't work. Uh, Beckton just snuffed it out, and he had nowhere to go. Again, the good coverage by the secondary and the linebackers, and the finally wrapped up defensively by Milky Own, who has, uh, that's not considered a sack, but he's got four on the year. So, uh, he might add to that before the day is over. Second and 11, a loss of yard, one on the play by Genorio. Showing the eye formation, it's Tapia. Tapia got some good yardage to the outside, finally forced down by Barthel. Barthel, Melky Owen, also in on the play. Each team with a pair of timeouts remaining as we reach the 4-18 mark of the first half. 20 to nothing, Beckton in front. Third and six for Secaucus. Fake to Tapia, play action, Genorio rolling, pressure is on, still trying to get away, and he's gonna be dragged down inside the 40-yard line. Well, there was plenty of pursuit on the play. It's just that it took the third crew to get him, including E.J. Barthel, who was uh, in on the tackle uh, on this play. Now watch again. He comes to this side. Nothing doing. Being chased by a couple of defensive linemen, so he cuts back the other way. Three guys missed him. Sidesteps a fourth guy, puts him down, but there's only so much you can do. Timeout Seacaucus, 3.39. Remain in the first half of play. Beckton with a 20 to nothing lead. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you, Mike, this uh, Beckton offense, very impressive. Uh, Jim Bonanno promised a lot of people would touch the football, and they have so far. Well, he mentioned all the skill players that he has, and uh, he wants to make everybody happy. So far, he has, especially the Beckton fans. There's Bonanno and the assistants, and I tell you what, when you look at uh, at some of the notes they gave us and and talking about great students, Cantone mentioned ranked uh, at the top of his class uh, with the 1300 on his SATs. Mike Begg's an AB student. Same for uh, Pete Milkion. Dan Farina's an A student, and so is Sean Yoakum. Big punt here for Korizinski. More of a line drive, but again, the wind pushes it down. Hits at the 35. And gas knocked off his feet at the 42. That was a tough hit there. Matt Zacone getting up a little slowly for Secaucus. He's a tough kid and a defensive leader. He'll shake that one off. Well, you have to say this is a crucial 3 minutes 27 seconds for the Secaucus Patriots. You do not want to go into the locker room down by more than 20. So this is really a, a big, big series in this football game. Here comes Cantone. And Cantone will drag it out into Seacaucus territory. So a good first down play for the Wildcats. Down 20 already. The Patriots do not want to look at a 26 or possibly 28 yard uh, point uh, differential coming into the second half. There again, Cantone, the quick step to the outside. And then the quick step back inside. And look at, he just knocks over the defender. I mean, he puts his head down and says, get out of my way. Just across the midfield stripe. Second and two. Cantone has the first down. Still going. Stiff arm brings him inside the 35. And Cantone is just, is just so tough. All he needs is a little bit of room to get through. And what's happening is the back to an offensive line is just pushing everybody out. I mean, even though they're a little bit smaller uh, weight-wise on average against uh, the Seacaucus defense, look at this. Look at all the room that they have. And he cuts back, switches hands. What a great move. He saw that uh, that he was going to be hit from the left side, switched it to the right arm, and finally Genorio had to chase him down from behind. First and 10 for Beckton, 2.25 to go in the first half. 
Quick toss to the outside for Gas, flag on the play. Gas going at the 25, the 20, hit hard by Tapia at the 15, but again, we've got a flag down. Well, they're going to possibly bring this one back. See what our referee has to say. Gas got all the way down to the 16. We've got an offensive holding at the 34. So no doubt the Patriots are going to take this penalty. 2.14 to go. Looked like Mike Beggs on the left side of the line. Might have just had a little bit of shirt. Beggs has played so well today. Big break for the Patriots there. They get yardage and also quite a bit of time went off the clock there on that play. 2.14 to go in the first half. Becton trying to uh, supply not not the uh, the fatal blow, but maybe uh, a stunning shot here if they can score. Quick toss again to Gas. Gas with a big hole. Tapia misses him at the 35, the 20. Gas cuts inside a nice block, and Gas will walk it into the end zone. A 44-yard pass from Ferry to Gas with the block thrown by Barthel, but there is a penalty on the play. And it penalty looks like at it's the coming 40. back, yep. Clipping. And that's such a big break for the Seacaucus Patriots. It basically keeps them in the game. If they can hold them here, the Patriots will have the wind at their back for the third quarter, and that's when they're going to have to attack and try to put some points on the board. But that, uh, that would have been a, a tough blow if that uh, was allowed to be a touchdown. And we saw three differentiations of the shovel pass in this game, one to the right side of the line, one to the left side of the line. Both of them worked, one for a touchdown. And now we're seeing this one coming across the field. And look at the cutback right here. It goes to the outside. That one missed tackle, and he's gone. It looked like they pretty much had him at the line uh, when it was coming across. They were going to be able to shut it down, but they couldn't. And uh, I think we saw the clip in the right-hand corner just near the end of that play. Some great downfield blocking by Barthel, obviously well after the clip. It now back at the third. Wow, we got a bit of a trick play there. Ross takes it out to the 49-yard line. It went to Ross. Ross looked like he was going to snap it through his legs to the quarterback, and then Ross kept it... Uh, all for a gain of about five yards on the play. Take another look at this one. There's Ross. Faced it to Ferry. Uh, caught our guy sleeping a little bit, but then he uh, responded well. Well, as long as, he, as long as the quarterback touches the ball, he doesn't have to actually grab it. As long as it hits his hands, the runner can go off with it, and that's exactly what happened in this situation. Well, it didn't need to on that play, because remember, the snap was uh, the right snap there. The snap was there, yeah. 126 to go in the first half. Caught all of us off guard there for a second. Uh, that, that was one, quite that a one, play. It didn't get, but the Patriots were on it. That's true. Got to give Seacock his credit. And that's what counts. Let's take know? one more look at it there. He fakes the handoff to Ross, and then uh, to Ferry, rather, and Ross keeps it and is knocked down at the 49-yard line. I get the feeling that's not part of their regular fare, though. Becton, 143 rushing yards through the... First two quarters of play, Cantone, eight carries, 89 yards. Now he came in averaging seven yards a carry, and of course he's well over 10 at this point. They need to get down to the 21, second and 29 for the Wildcats of Becton. Pitch back to Ross. Ross has about 10 on the play. Question is, did they keep him in bounds? No, we've got a stop of the clock at 118 remaining in the half. Beckton this year using a spread offense as opposed to the traditional Delaware wing tee that they uh, used in the past. And it seems to be uh, working just fine. The kids have adjusted. And uh, as you said, it gives them a chance to spread the ball around to a bunch of different skilled players. Third and 20 for Becton. They need to get to the 21-yard line. Quick pitch right. Cantone looking to throw, looking for Gas. Gas trying to run under it and can't hold on at the 10-yard line. Well, we haven't seen it all from the Becton offense, have we? 
That time the wind might have just taken a little too much uh, an advantage against Becton as Cantones throw a good one, but the wind might have just pushed it off the fingertips of Gas. Well, Gas was right there and he reaches out and he was just hoping he'd be able to haul that one in. Maybe the wind did take it a little bit uh, blowing from left to right, but uh, almost another big play for the Becton Wildcats. Fourth and 20. Roscoe into punt. This will be his second punt of the day. Quick snap. They're faking it. Coming to the near side. And finally dragged down at the Seacaucus 41-yard line with one minute to go in the half. Well, it was an interesting call. I mean, you're thinking you're going to punt in this spot. You have the wind behind you, so you're going to get an extra few yards out of it anyway. But uh, another uh, another way to try to keep Seacaucus off balance. The Patriots, though, did a great job of, uh, of reading that fake, and uh, they have good field position. Good call by uh, the Beckton coaching staff. You know, only a minute to go, so even though you're turning it over near midfield, not all that dangerous unless Seacaucus can do something here. No. Genorio. Looking for some options, throws it to the right side intended for Kemper. We've got a flag on the play, possibly a roughing the quarterback. Well, I beg to disagree on that uh, on that last uh, fake punt, but that's uh, that's all right. I, I, I want to get that ball downfield. Genario can make something happen here, and now you have a roughing the passer, and you still have 51 seconds on the clock. <laughs> you know, anything can happen. One big play. And we talked. We talked about Seacock's needing to stop Becton. What a bonus it would be not only to stop them, but also score in the final minute. Absolutely. And then have the wind at your back in that third quarter. Roughing the passer, the call. Ball marked at the Becton 45 with 51 seconds to go. So let's see what the Patriots can do. They need to go 45 yards. Genorio rolling right. No protection. Throws on the run. Completes it to Kemper. Kemper, unfortunately for the Patriots, loses his footing as he gets to the 32. Patriots with one timeout remaining. Let's see when they choose to use it. Clock on the move at 40 seconds to go. Still plenty of time here. Genario takes his time, gets the sign. The advantage, of course, to the offense. They can run out of bounds. You can have a completion. So it's better to have one timeout while you're on offense than one on defense if you need the ball back. Let's see what Genorio does. Rolling to his left. Pressure on. Airs it out down the middle, and it's intercepted at the 10-yard line. Picked off by Yokum. Sean Yokum with the interception at the 10 with 21 seconds remaining. Well, the pressure came from the blind side here as Genorio rolls to his left you'll see the pursuit and he didn't get hit real hard but he felt the pressure from three sides puts the ball up there and Yoakum comes up with the INT Ferry will take an E and that will do it for the first half of play 14 seconds will uh, count themselves down on the clock, but it was an impressive first half of football for these Becton Wildcats, especially their offense, Mike Kersey. No question about it. They're powerful, they're strong, and uh, we saw the tandem of uh, Ross and um, Cantone get the job done. There you see it, a, uh, a shutout in the making. Becton has outscored their opponents 117 to nothing through three and a half games. At the half, Becton 20. Seacock is zero. We'll be back with third quarter action right after this. I'm Lou Tilly on the Sports Connection tonight at 11. Seattle, 116 regular season wins. Now they're in trouble. And from the baseball wars, Andy Musser wrapping up a great career with the Phillies. is here to talk baseball with us on the Sports Connection. Tonight, 7 Eastern on CNN News. In the aftermath of the terrorist attacks, they were there when we needed them. Now they need our help. Now more than ever, CNN News. Tune in, find out. On the next, it's your call. The first battle is being waged, but it's only one of a long series of battles. America Strikes Back, a close-up look at the war on terrorism with Congressman James Greenwood. It's your call. Tonight, 8 Eastern, only on CNN. 
on the next real life. Targeted for the way they look, for where they come from, for what they believe. Is there a price for freedom? On the next real life. Today, 5 Eastern, only on CN8. Looking for something? Check out QVC. We show about 150 different products each day. So tune in. You never know what you'll find. Hello, I'm Brian Morrow, and this is Comcast Varsity Football, where you'll find the best high school gridiron action five days a week, 2.30 to 4.30. We're currently at halftime in a game between the Becton Wildcats and the Secaucus Patriots. These two teams started playing each other back in 1977 and are currently tied 12-12 in their head-to-head -head record. In their third game of the season last year, the Patriots beat the Wildcats 12-7. This year, the Patriots are back with five players who have already made college commitments for football. One of those guys is senior Jamal Ford, who is back from knee surgery and is ready to have a big year playing wide receiver. They'll also be looking for some success using the 3-4 defense that Coach Voorhees learned from former Pittsburgh Steelers defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau. The Wildcats are hoping that their offense with their full-eye backfield can disrupt that D. The last time Becton won a state title was a 93, and they won a league championship in 94. The Wildcats are now hoping that their roster of 35 guys will be strong enough to beat the Patriots today and keep a hope of another title alive. Let's get you out now for some second-half action. Welcome back to high school football. The halftime scoreboard brought to you by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, making health care work. Beckton with 12 first downs. And they have just controlled the football on the ground and in the air. We are ready to go with the second half. The Patriots will field it. Genorio picking it up at the 16. Trying to get to the outside, and he will make it across the 20-yard line, and that is where the Patriots will start from. Patriots had 65 yards in the air in the first half, 8 of 12 passing, but uh, four, tur four penalties against each team, and uh, Mike, one turnover uh, hurt a little bit, but that was really on that last drive of the half. What's funny is that the beginning of the game, as uh, as you continue to take a look at the stats, 199 total yards for Becton and uh, and uh, 58 for Seacaucus. So Becton really has dominated, but the Patriots were within two yards of scoring a touchdown and taking the lead in this game. And then uh, once they gave the ball up uh, deep in Becton territory, Becton proceeded to drive 98 yards. And that changed the complexion of the game, as did the wind in the second uh, second quarter, as you mentioned. And at this third quarter, Seacock is again going into the wind. Strong wind blowing from our left to our right. Tapio with the first carry of the half. So Becton with those 12 first downs. Patriots right now just need to generate some type of offense. Try to get something on the board here. Second and six for the Patriots. Tapia finds an opening to his left, still going, and Tapia carries it out shy of the 40-yard line, but a nice big gap in the middle, and John Tapia followed the big blocks. He got the blocks, Alex Smith, David Gallion, Bo Fitzgibbons pushing and uh, opening uh, things up for John Tapia, a 5'9", 180-pound senior. And you see it right there. They open up a nice hole. He gets through, gets a little bit of acceleration, just a tough, hard-nosed, strong run by Tapia. First and 10 for Secaucus. Again, Tapia gets the call, looking to go outside. Made it to the 40, a gain of two on the play. Well, that Secaucus uh, front line, a lot of experience up there. Austin Hinton, just a sophomore, but started every game as a freshman at left tackle. Alex Smith, the left guard, started every game last year as a sophomore. David Galley in the center started every game last year as a junior. Tapia so far this day, eight carries, 40 yards, doing some good work here to start quarter number three. Let's see if they continue to run left. They do. It's Tapia again. Tapia just out to the 41. 
Talk about that offensive line. Gallion was named captain by his teammates, and that really says something about what type of uh, young man he is. He is uh, the leader of this uh, offensive team for Sea Caucus. And Austin Hinton is a natural lefty playing left tackle, and what an advantage that is to playing left tackle. For what I was told, he's also a very highly respected basketball player. Genorio rolling right, throwing on the run. Might have been deflected in the secondary by Barthel. He was looking for Kemper, number 24. And Barthel certainly got his hand in the way of the pass and might have even gotten a piece of it. Let's see if we can spot it on the replay. Well, watch the roll out to the right side here. Plenty of time, too. Nobody chasing him. Genorio just sails it a little bit too high. Korzynski on to punt. Mentioned DJ Barthel. There's an interesting note uh, about him we'll get to in a moment. New punter in the game, that's Camilo Hermida. And he hangs up a nice high punt, but as we've seen all day, the wind just slaps it back down, and it will be fielded at the Becton 49-yard line. E.J. Barthel, as uh, we were going to mention, is a brother of former Beckton standout Nolan James, who now is the starting linebacker at the University of New Haven. Barthel doing well in his own right as uh, the tight end, runner-up for uh, Athlete of the Week back in week one. That was against St. Mary's, a 20 to nothing Beckton win. Nice strong tackle. Talk about intensity. Temba Georgios wasn't going to let that one get away. 6'3", 225 pounder. A converted tight end. It was uh, playing very well offensively and defensively. He's a right tackle on offense. He has all the tools, according to head coach Charlie Voorhees. Gain him one on the play, second and nine. Again, it's Bajorgis with the tackle. Bajorgis right there again. And, and uh, in talking to uh, Charlie Voorhees uh, about Bajorgis, he said he's got speed, strength, quickness, and he's very coachable. It's a pretty good combination, don't you think? No doubt about it. Makes for a good player and a good teammate. Sure does. He's a good athlete. Third and eight. Key play in this early stages of half number two for both sides. 20 to nothing, Beckton leads. Ferry keeps it, trying to get outside, and he's not going to get there. Nice tackle by Matt Zacone, and that is going to force a Becton punt. This is the type of defensive presence that the Patriots need here early in the third quarter. They have to make something happen. Now, they didn't get a turnover, but uh, they at least uh, will be getting the ball back and uh, can try to make something happen. And, uh, you know, for Becton, what they want to do right now, they want to eat up some of that clock with this big lead. Zacone with the initial hit. Riles finished him off. So a good defensive stand for Seacaucus to start the third quarter. Left-footed punt heading towards the sideline. And it will go out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. So the Patriots will start in pretty decent field position with 7.50 to go in the third quarter. And here comes the Becton defense back out on the field. They have played well. In fact, uh, how well have they played? Well, this is the uh, fourth game for them. They haven't let up a point yet while scoring offensively. A total of 117. So 117 to nothing, uh, you're going to be undefeated. Tapia. It's tough going up the middle. You hear the band in the background. See, August Band, very talented. So their halftime uh, show with a uh, little Muppet music in there. It's uh, very good. That's a great part about the high school atmosphere, though. You come out to a game. And it's the whole atmosphere. It's not just the game. Tapia coming to the left. Tried to cut inside. No going there. So it's going to be a third and 
Long yardage, nine, possibly ten coming up for the Patriots. Tapia just hasn't been able to find too many holes opened up for him. The Becton defensive line is just closing things up uh, extremely quickly. Genorio getting the play from Chris Snyder, number nine. Now this is a huge play for Secaucus here early in the third quarter. Genorio, play action pass down the middle, completes it at the midfield stripe to Andrew Ramirez. What a toss by Justin Genorio. Well, he found his big receiver downfield, and we haven't talked uh, much about Mr. Ramirez, but uh, he makes the uh, the pattern, slant pattern over the middle. Gets plenty of protection here. Look at this. Uh, in fact, there was Tappy looking for somebody to block. Wide open. Ramirez turns, makes the grab, finally wrapped up, but now without gaining another eight yards after the catch. Ramirez, a six foot three freshman with the completion. The Patriots are in Becton territory. And again, what a pass by Genorio. He gives to Tapia. Tapia takes it to the 45 to the 40 yard line, excuse me. We saw the strong arm, arm that uh, Genorio had uh, against the wind. In the uh, in the second quarter, and it seems like he's adjusted now. He knows that at first the first one he threw in the second quarter kind of hung up there. Now he's been starting to push the ball, throw it harder, and that was just a gorgeous pass, beautiful spiral. Yeah, hey, good point, Mike. That's uh, sometimes the the telling story of a real good athlete making adjustments to their game as they go along. And let's see if Genorio has made that adjustment. He did on that last pass there. They give to Kemper. Kemper rough going, ran right into Danny Zito. Well, they snuffed that one out in a hurry. Good play by the Beckton defense once again. And this is when they really stiffen up. Not that they haven't been tough all game long, but when somebody gets into their territory, I mean, they're just, they're just incredible focus by the Beckton defense. And, uh, you know, I mean, you and I know in playing sports uh, growing up, you know, if you, if you have the goose egg, especially uh, through into your fourth game, uh, whether it's playing soccer or whatever sport it is, you don't want the other team to score. That's for sure. It's a matter of pride, even though at, at some point in the game it may not affect the outcome. Genorio looking to throw, airs it out, looking, and what a catch by Andrew Ramirez. I think Charlie Voorhees might have found himself a, a star in the making here. Andrew Ramirez just went flat on that one, stuck the hands out and hauled it in. Watch it again on the replay. And again, great protection by the Seacock's offensive line. He has all day. Perfect spiral. And look at the stretch out by Ramirez. That is an NFL reception, folks. A la Fred Bolitnikoff. I'm not sure if the uh, the high school kids will remember Freddie, but boy, he had good hands and he made catches like that. Oakland uh, I Raiders. Do, I do, do. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> what a catch there at the 17-yard line. First down for Seacockers. Krieger. He was down. Ball popped free, but he was down on contact with the ground. So uh, a break there for the Patriots. 4:31 remain in the third quarter. Milky Owen and Cantone, and you can see right there that the, uh, the running back was just slipping. He couldn't even get to the line, and as he came down, uh, the ground cannot cause the fumble and uh, got away when that ball hit. But the Patriots looking good right now and starting to build a little bit of momentum in their side. Gain of two on the play. We'll call it second and eight for the Patriots. The ball to 15-yard line. Tapia, Tapia inside the 10, stretching forward. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. Remember, the wind will be with Caucus come quarter number four. There's the run by Tapia. Well, Tapia is showing his stuff here. He gets some good blocking along the inside. Gains about five or six on the play as they inch closer. Tapia, rough going up the middle. They needed to get to about the eight. They're just at about the nine. It's fourth down, a yard to go, and uh, no bigger play in the football game, at least up to this point. This is it. Dan Farina, number 75, in on that tackle with Nick Cantone, the leading tackler on the team. And uh, good chance those two will be in on the tackle in this spot. Let's see if the Patriots can get it. Big play. 
huge play in this football game, and Justin Genorio realizes that. He calls a timeout. So a defense that uh, didn't quite look good for that play. So with 2.58 to go in the third quarter, Becton has that 20 to nothing lead, but the Patriots are threatening. We'll be right back. It's official. Ford is offering 0% financing on everything. Ford drives America. And right now, we're leading the way with America's best sellers at America's best values. 0% on everything, including Ford Escape, Ford Explorer, Ford Expedition, and the number one selling truck of the world, Ford F-Series. 0% means you pay no interest, and that will save you thousands. Act now. Ford drives America. Visit your Tri-State Quality Ford store. Have you ever felt like you're at the end of your rope? I know I have. If you currently receive insurance, settlement payments, prize winnings, or any annuity, Prosperity Partners can help you land on your feet with money to pay bills or buy a car, maybe a new home. You could start a business or get an education, whatever you want. So if you receive an annuity and need cash now, call Prosperity Partners at 1-800-435-1213. We make life easy. at the Patriot cheerleaders and uh, they are anxiously awaiting something to cheer about and Mike Kersey on this fourth and one they are ready to let loose if their team can get them a first down well they or might. more yeah, and, and, and more that's what they're looking for but the first down is the key right now they need that push from Alex Smith David Gallion Bo Fitzgibbons up front and there is Genario leading them up to the line fake to Tapia Genario Looking to run, the pocket's breaking down, he's hit, ball pops free. At that point, really doesn't matter, recovered by Becton, they would have taken over on downs anyway. So, the Wildcats take over on the fourth down hold. Well, the Becton defense toughened up once again as they have all season long, stopping this fourth down play. Genario looking to get it all in one shot. And on this particular play of this drive, and the only play of this drive where he didn't get the protection he needed, it broke down on fourth down. Now the Seacolk's defense has to rise to the occasion. Becton starting at their own 17. They did on the last possession. And again, it's Georges helping out on the tackle. Also in there, Rich Riles. Seacolk has held the last time Becton touched the football. They have to do it again. Becton in the first half. Nick Cantone, eight carries, 89 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Jimmy Ross, 11 carries for 64 yards and a touchdown. Jared Ferry leading him up to the line at quarterback. He's playing to enlist in the Army after this year. Second and seven. Big hole to the outside for Cantone. And Cantone will have first down and more for the Wildcats, nearing the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Becton football. Talk about uh, all the weight training that they do. They train all year lifting weights, doing plyometrics for 12 months. And all of Becton starters bench over 200, although most have reached between 250 and 325. Not as big physically as the Patriots, but they are a strong team. Quick pitch, nice tackle in the backfield. And again, it is Georges. What a move by the senior to get into the backfield and make the tackle. Well, he had to get rid of the guy that was in front of him first, and that was the uh, Seacaucus Patriot, uh, make that the uh, the Becton offensive lineman. He gets right around him, just kind of tosses him out of the way and makes a nice play. It's the uh, Bubba Smith school. That's right. Grab everybody <laughs> in the backfield and throw them out until you find the guy with the ball. There's another guy most of these kids probably don't know. My gosh, we're old. Second down and long for the Wildcats. That was Cantone wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Uh, we mentioned the wind and how big a factor that could be in the fourth quarter. The key factor for Seacock is get the ball so that you can have it with the wind when it is in your favor. That's what they've got to do here on third and 13. Yes. Huge defensive play coming up for the Patriots. Although Beckton will punt if it comes to that with the wind in uh, just 42 seconds, the Patriots will have the wind. They'll need it to come from 20 down.
Ross trying to get outside, and he is dragged down. Tapio with the tackle. A little help from Kemper. And with 22 seconds to go, Becton will have to give it away on 4th and 11. The Patriots coming out of the locker room at halftime uh, obviously made some defensive adjustments against a, a very potent running attack, and uh, they've done a good job in, in stopping Becton so far here in the third quarter. Seven seconds to go. Becton is going to rush the snap to get it off in the third quarter. They do get it away. Sailing kick, and it goes over Genorio's head inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 11. And that is where the Patriots will have to start from. They trail by 20. They've got a long way to go. But we're going to turn around the field as the third quarter has come to a close here at Seacaucus High School with the score. Becton 20. Seacaucus nothing. We'll be right back with the final quarter after this. Have you ever felt like you're at the end of your rope? I know I have. If you currently receive insurance, settlement payments, prize winnings, or any annuity, Prosperity Partners can help you land on your feet with money to pay bills or buy a car, maybe a new home. You can start a business or get an education, whatever you want. So if you receive an annuity and need cash now, call Prosperity Partners at 1-800-435-1213. We make life easy. It's official. Ford is offering 0% financing on everything. Ford drives America, and right now, we're leading the way with America's best sellers at America's best values. Zero percent on everything, including Ford Escape, Ford Explorer, Ford Expedition, and the number one selling truck of the world, Ford F-Series. Zero percent means you pay no interest, and that will save you thousands. Act now. Ford drives America. Visit your Tri-State Quality Ford store. Welcome back to Comcast Varsity Football. I'm Brian Morrow. We're in the sixth week of the high school football season, and we have the Secaucus Patriots hosting the Becton Wildcats out in East Rutherford, New Jersey. They're now in the fourth quarter, so let's get you back to the action. Start of the fourth quarter here at Secaucus. Becton leads by 20. Tapia on first down. Trying to scoot outside. Makes his way just to the 14-yard line. So far, the big factor in the ball game for Becton, as Tapia might uh, be experiencing a bit of a cramp right now. Number 44 in white is Nick Cantone. Cantone, 11 carries, 104 rushing yards, and a pair of touchdowns for the Becton Wildcats. Might have a calf uh, cramp right there. Don't want to... Uh have any conjecture from our point, but uh, only when they push that that toe back like that. And then there's a look at uh, Jim Bonanno, who has to be happy with his team's performance thus far against a very tough Seacaucus team, and he has a 20-point advantage here. But no matter what happens uh, now, I mean, Becton is is certainly in good position to move on and, uh, and possibly, uh, I mean, their goal is to win the, the uh, division championship in the BCSL and move on to the state playoff. Seacaucus, I think, is a state playoff uh, team as well. Uh, I mean, uh, there were a couple of plays today where they had... Uh, chances to get into the end zone and it just didn't happen especially uh, you go back to uh, that first series well, uh, as, lo as long as you mentioned it Mike uh, the first PowerPoint ratings have to hear uh, finally been released currently in North Jersey section one group one where both these two teams play the hand for Tapia walking off the field Preskill currently leads with 19 points Saddlebrook with 17 Glen Rock with 15 Westwood 13 New Milford 12 now the key factor is that Saddlebrook Glen Rock and New Milford have each played four games already Seacaucus with 10 Becton with 10 so uh, this win for either team will bring with it uh, uh, quite a number of power points matter of fact will boost the winner to third place in the section Genorio looking to throw pressure is on tapped away and it falls incomplete. Uh, that was Panagaro with the deflection. So far, Genorio is now 10 of 16 for 118 yards. 
And they're getting right back out there. Watch it again. And watch the great play by Panagaro as he comes up. He's just 5'8", but whoa, he gets up high and knocks it away. Super play. Ramirez was going to be on the receiving end, and we saw what he did in the third quarter. Third and eight. Ramirez has four catches. Looking to throw. Good toss just off the hands of Tapia. Ramirez, four catches, 55 yards, but the intended receiver on that one was just off the fingertips. Let's watch it again. Oh, just a bullet. And that was that was a tough ball. I mean, he, that ball was thrown hard. But what I like, what I've been impressed with, is that Tapia, who's just a junior in his first year of starting at quarterback, is showing a strong arm. He's a good athlete. He's just going to get better and better. And then watch out for his senior year in 2002. Again, it's Hermita back to punt. Low kick. No one back to receive for Becton, so it will take a long Sea Caucus roll. And it will stop at the Becton 35 yard line. 10.58 to go in the football game. One well, guy, as we continue on, you might want to keep an eye on, on the uh, Sea Caucus offensive line is left guard Alex Smith, 6'2, 250 pounder. He wears number 55. Alex Smith has been described as an excellent football player, he's a hard worker in the weight room. And Charlie Voorhees even said that he has developed into one of the best offensive linemen in the school's history. And that's really saying something. Coming up for Beckton next week, they will travel, they will host Wallington. Then they travel to Weehawken on October 19th before hosting Woodridge, travel to Hasburg Heights, and they finish up with Lindhurst. Quick handoff. That's Ross. Ross across the... 40 to the 44, a gain of nine on the play. Second and one for the Wildcats. Now they didn't do much in the third quarter offensively. Not, uh, not any kind of plays like that that we saw in the first half, but combined, Cantone and Ross at halftime in three and a half games at 80 rushes for 390. I uh, make that 697 yards combined. Second and a yard. Cantone, first down. Moore, still going. Dragged down just by the shirt by Tapia, or Cantone would have added to his touchdown total. What more can you say about what Cantone's been able to do? He moves to the outside, and he moves pretty quickly, too. A little bit stocky, big upper body, but boy, he gets those legs churning, and he is out there and free, and he picks up a ton of yardage in a hurry. At the 36-yard line, now the key for Becton is to either score or eat up clock or do both. Well, we saw movement on both sides to see who the guilty party is, and it looks like Becton. First and 15 now. Once again, Ron Vaca is our referee, Tom Bolin, the umpire. Tom Bolin, Jr., the back judge. Kevin Ostak is the head linesman. Terry Gilmore, the line judge. And Ed Jaruszewski is the clock operator. 20 to nothing, Becton with 9.37 to go in the football game. First and 15. Cantone, still moving. Finally dragged down by Riles, but a big game for Cantone. And at some point, Seacock is going to have to start trying a football tackle. Only one turnover in this football game, and that a, a relatively non-threatening uh, interception with 10 seconds to go in the half. Again, Cantone cuts inside, still going. Cantone at the 20. The 10, looking for the pylon, pushed out of bounds inside the five. Another tremendous run by Nick Cantone. And wherever he plays down the road in football, whether it be Colgate or Wagner or wherever he winds up, they're going to have a fine here. This kid can play. Nick Cantone, quick lateral movement. Let's watch him again. It's away from one tackler. Deeks another. And then he's off to the races, and 
almost to another touchdown. Down to the one. Let's see if uh, Jim Bonanno calls Cantone's number here. Doing the hard work getting him to the one. Let's see who gets the call. It is Cantone, and he will sidestep into the end zone for his third touchdown of the afternoon. Cantone now with eight touchdowns on the season. And the senior capping off a brilliant day of running. He deserved that touchdown. And the offensive line deserves kudos as well. Pete Milky on the right side, Dan Farina, center Kevin Moran. Again, Mike begs on to attempt the extra points. A 26-0 Beckton lead. Ferry is going to run with it. Ferry might pitch outside. Pitches to Beggs, and Beggs will take it in for the two-point conversion as Beckton makes up for the earlier missed extra point. And the score is now 28 to nothing. Twenty-eight nothing in favor of the Wildcats. We'll take a short break right now, and we'll be back with the final eight minutes and change of this football game from Secaucus High School. Have you ever felt like you're in the right place at the right time? I know I have. If you currently receive insurance settlement payments, prize winnings, or any annuity, Prosperity Partners can help you make the most of that opportunity with money to pay bills or buy a car, maybe a new home. You could start a business or get an education, whatever you want. So if you receive an annuity and need cash now, call Prosperity Partners at 1-800-435-1213. We make life easy. CNN Extra. CNN Extra. Startling. Heartbreaking. Always real. CN8 Extra. CN8 Extra. Only on CN8 News. CN8 Extra. Weeknights, 7 and 10 Eastern on CN8 News. On the next real life, targeted for the way they look, look. for where they come from, from, for what they believe. believe. Is there a price for freedom? On the next real life, today, 5 Eastern, only on CN8. With the New York skyline, off in the distance, Beckton has increased their lead to 28 to nothing here at Secaucus High School. The Wildcats look like they will move to 4-0 on this season. Short kick. Whoa, what a hit by Socrates Perez. Well, Socrates taking that Secaucus player to school. A lot of wisdom in that hit. <laughs> it's plenty. What are going on? He, he's pumped up about it, too. 6'2", 200-pound sophomore. Had a Full head of steam on that one. Nick Cantone on the afternoon, 16 carries, 166 yards, and three touchdowns. First and 10 for the Patriots. Pressure is on, and he's brought down. Once again for Cantone, three touchdowns. And his third touchdown play brought to you by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, making health care work. Steve Andra coming from his outside linebacker position just uh, gets it done, gets around the uh, offensive uh, lineman and makes the play. Steve Andra, another one having a fine game for Beckton. And there are a lot of, lot of different players on this Beckton squad who are all chipping in to what uh, is turning out to be a 4-0 and season. They shut out St. Mary's, Harrison, and North Arlington, and at this point, they are shutting out Sea Caucus. Boy, they look like they're coming with a little more enthusiasm in this series. Yeah, nothing on that draw play right there. They, they sense shutout number four. They do, and there's no question that uh, Bonanno and the coaching staff said, you know what, guys, we got to stop them now. They probably will get the ball back two more times. Let's, uh, let's keep it going, no letdowns. Beckton tremendously focused, big, strong team. Third and 23. On the reverse, the give to Kemper. And not much room to the outside. Difficulty in late in the ball game 
the players are going to stay more in their positions than earlier in a, a close ball game where they might try to over pursue and make a big play at this point they realize stay in my lane stay in my position don't get burned by a, that kind of play and you saw on that play too how the Beckton defense didn't bite on the fake on the reverse right here they give it off to Kemper and you can't see it here but now the Beckton defense is just sliding over to the right they're just sliding sliding and then pursuing and look how they just jam it up there just nothing going for Secaucus right now Korzynski on to attempt the punt Nice floater headed towards the sideline. Takes a sideways bounce. And Becton will start from the Sea Caucus 45-yard line. You mentioned earlier in the game that Becton was 5-5 five and five last year and lost three games in the last two minutes or less. They're not taking any chances this year. They're just flat out beating people, averaging uh, over 30 points a game. And to top it off, the JV and freshmen were undefeated last year. So they have... Good young players coming up. On the other side, we were talking to Charlie Voorhees on the field before the game, Paul, and he mentioned how the recreation department uh, is developing young players for their program. Yeah, he's very happy with the program. Uh, Jason Elwell is the uh, person who heads the rec program for the Patriots, and uh, Charlie Voorhees is very happy with the uh, developed players that are coming up to the varsity squad for the Patriots coming through the rec program. They they have a uh, sort of a preseason uh camp attended by the eighth graders incoming freshmen and, and he said they they were just fundamentally ready to go and you can even see it today you got a guy like andrew ramirez a freshman receiver right. for sea caucus mm -hmm. making a lot of contributions and uh, boy you don't get that unless you get a lot of support from the rec program and uh, they just took out number 44 nick cantone he might have seen his last play of the game got a big hand from the beckton crowd he deserved it As we said, Becton, 3-0, 20 nothing shutout of St. Mary's in the season opener, 41 nothing over Harrison, 36 nothing last Friday in North Arlington, and at this point it is 28 to nothing as we near the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter. And what a big day for that young man, number 44, well-deserved rest right now, getting all the congratulations, some big hugs. And for Beckton, it uh, you know it doesn't get any easier. The next weekend, they will host Wallington. Wallington was also three and zero coming into this weekend's play, so it uh, could very well be that Beckton will see a second straight week against an undefeated team, uh, depending on what the uh, Wallington does this weekend. But the way they've been playing, they've they've met every challenge thus far, and uh, they've tried uh, a little bit of trickery. Uh, their offense uh, and defense have been playing extremely well. Their kicking game is uh, is on board. They're in good shape. Penegaro and Tyrell in the backfield now for Becton as we are closing in on the four minute mark. For Sea Caucus, they'll travel to Harrison next week on a Friday night. They'll be at St. Mary's on the 20th. Then they'll host North Arlington right here on the 27th. Wallington, the first weekend of November. They'll close out on an unusual Friday after Thanksgiving at Weehawken. Not too often you have a game on the day after Thanksgiving. There's a couple on the Thanksgiving Eve, but uh, Sea Caucus travels to Weehawken on the day after Thanksgiving. Again, the carry bringing it to the 20 and inside the 20 it's a first down again for the Wildcats 333 remaining in the football game Panagaro sophomore 5'8 170 pounder tucks it away and just keeps churning That's just a nice play before uh, he's finally taken down <laughs> from the 16 yard line first and 10 Panagaro wrapped up high and wrestled down on the play by Zacone. We have three father-son combinations on Beckton. Volunteer coach Rich Pappas and son Mike. Assistant coach Mike Ryan and son Mike. And coach Carl Ross and son Jimmy. We saw how, uh, how good Jimmy is. 
as he uh, continues to churn out uh, yardage for the Becton football team. And that big freshman year, just a sophomore. Second and nine for the Wildcats as they milk the clock. It's down to 229. Clock belongs to Becton right now. Panagaro coming outside. He's got some moves. Yeah, finally knocked off his feet at about the 10 by Krieger. And for Secaucus right now, I mean, it's it's a tough one to take. These schools are only uh, three miles apart. There's been a rivalry that's brewed. We mentioned that uh, they've been playing this game since 1977. They had 12 wins apiece coming in, so uh, Becton will have the edge in the series, 13 to 12. But uh, Secaucus has to remember that they're only dropping to three and one. Long way to go. Inside the five. Shaking a player for Secaucus is Krieger. Took a hard hit into the leg. I think the Patriots will also look back to that first series when they were oh so close. I mean, you know, you go up 6-0, 7-0 in a, in a game against a team that, you know, they're 3-0, you're 3-0, but you know, you know that you're the underdog coming in. I mean, that, that really changes the momentum. It puts Becton on their heels a little bit, and then they don't get in. Becton turns around, drives down field 98 yards, scores a touchdown, gets another. Um, that really, I mean, that really, that, that's something going to look back. I, I mean, Charlie Voorhees is going to say, you know what, guys, if we had just gotten that in, it could have changed the whole complexion of the game. Yeah, sir. I mean, who knows? It could have ended up 28 to seven. Maybe. But still, a uh, good point. I mean, what a, what a a boost for Becton to hold Sea Caucus on a, a fourth and goal situation, and then to go the 98 yards. Cantone scoring from two out with 10:56 uh, to go in the second quarter. They held the ball from the 5:43 mark all the way down to 10:56. The point is, the games aren't always won or lost at the end. Sometimes they're That's lost true. early. And nice, nice look at the crowd here at the Sea Caucus, and you saw the huge American flag uh, put across the stands here. Good show of patriotism by the Patriots. Krieger making his way off the field. 121 to go. It is a first and goal now for the Wildcats. And looks like they're going to take a knee. So uh, a nice move by Jim Bonanno to take a knee here as the decision has long been put away and there you see the American flag draped across the stands here at Secaucus High School driving uh, through Secaucus uh, we saw so many oh. American flags and people out and just uh, uh, so much uh, patriotism uh, is tremendous second and goal and uh, again you'd have to assume the Wildcats will just take a knee on this one also and this we might have to get off one more snap in this football game Well, that's it, and Becton still unbeaten, and the battle of unbeatens coming in. Jim Bonanno on the sideline. His crew has to be happy with a solid performance. And that will do it uh, as the 25-second clock will not be reset in time, so the clock will just run down. Uh, what a performance, uh, Mike Kersey. Boy, Jim Bonanno promised everybody on our team, our specialty players, when they touch the ball, they can make something happen, and did they ever. Well, there's one thing you have to look at, one number, 125 to nothing, and that's what they've outscored their opponents in four games. Becton has been solid all over, and there is the man. Incredible. Our key player, Nick Cantone, with three touchdown runs, well over 100 yards rushing. The final score this afternoon, Becton 28, Seacock is nothing. For Mike Kersey, I'm Paul Spahala. Thank you for watching High School Football. Well, that'll just about wrap up today's action, but be sure to tune in tomorrow when we go out to central Pennsylvania as the Wilson Bulldogs travel to play the Hemfield Black Knights. And don't forget to watch every weekday from 2.30 to 4.30 for the best in high school football. So for everyone here at Comcast Varsity Football, I'm Brian Morrow. Thanks for watching.